planning on 1 million lives episode 2. Well, it's funnier now. <laughs> it's funnier now, and um, wow. The action has a bit picked up. Okay? We see a little bit of gore, alright? Imagine. Call him Yusuke. It's Yusuke. Upgrading from. Here's the humor part. Upgrading from farmer to chef. Okay, now he has bladed weapons at least, okay? He has a bladed weapon at least. Bust that giant goblin wide open. They were able to. They were, they were able to beat that goblin as a team. Okay? Uh, Narivai kasi hindi lang kasame. When he did that. When he. When he cut that giant coffin wide open, that uh, that spelled doom for the giant. So, yeah. Well, uh, in the end, he realized that he's been selfish all this time, he's been self-centered, and well, he he posed the question for all of us: If he quits this quest now, will the city that he hates be destroyed? Yeah. No wonder, ito pala ang title ng anime na to. Now I know why it's titled, I'm Standing on One Million Lives. This is where Yusuke realized uh, the gravity of the situation. Uh, how much weight he has on his shoulders. Oh, not just his weight. Uh, that weight is also on his two, on the two girls. I forgot, I forgot the name. I forgot the name, right? He realized that, well, he stopped being selfish and became, a, he became not just a team player, he became a team leader, right? <clears throat> Ginamit niya yung pagka-gamer niya rito. Right? So, well, overall, it's a really good episode. It's a really good episode. But, um, I couldn't help comparing this to Ragnarok the animation, especially this part, this particular episode. Because, uh, they're using terms like job, quest, all right? Very Ragnarok. Because uh, I used to be, I used to play Ragnarok uh, like it was, I used to play Ragnarok almost every day during, during, during its heyday. I know the terms. I know, I know, I know the lingo. <laughs> but um, compared to the Ragnarok the animation, it's this is way better. This is way better. Because it's not holding back on the violence. It's not holding back on the violence. Okay? Remember, remember that. Remember that Maha lifestyle. It's not holding back on the violence. Unlike, uh, unlike, uh, unlike Ragnarok the animation, it's more wholesome. It was more wholesome. But here, I probably wouldn't recommend this to to younger anime fans. All right. Well, I can now say that the comparisons end there. I'm standing on one million lives is way better than Ragnarok the animation. In terms of story, it's maganda siya. Now, for this episode, like I said, it's a really good one. But, oh, no, no more buts. It's a really good one, and the comparisons end here. The comparisons end here. So, I'm standing on 1 million lives, episode 2. Two thumbs up. A, um, bodes, two thumbs up. Now, we're gonna see in the next episode, if uh, Yusuke is totally sold on this idea that he he needs to save the he needs to save the world, okay? with uh, he needs to save uh, he needs to save the city that he hates. This is also the episode where I realized why it's titled "I'm Standing on One Million Lives." This is the episode where the meaning of that title was exposed. That's why I gave it 
the two, the three comes out. So again, I'm standing on One Million Lives Episode 2. I just can't, I just can't, uh, I really get, uh, what you know, I really can't, I really can't take the you for it, right? All right, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 19. Now, um, the rest of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom have already given their reviews. Now I give mine. It was a uh, uh, bizarre episode, all right? This King of Chairs creeped me out, all right? The way, um, the way, the way he was talking, the way he was actually malfunctioning because he was slowly losing the duel. Oh, that creeped me out. And I thought, and I thought the creepiness has been done with Igurashi several hours ago. All right. Probably the creepiest episode of this uh, of this uh, this Yu-Gi-Oh series. Okay? You guys up against a chair, a massage chair, and and with a very frightening ace, um, King of Thrones, right? Which enables which which enables the uh, the controller to summon a zero attack monster from hand, just like that. Personally, if I still had my Time Lord deck, I would definitely have I would definitely refurbish that for Rush Duels and have this as an ace. <laughs> you know I'm summon on Time Lord from hand just like that with, just because of its deck. Alright? For any zero attack monster for that man. It's scary. It's scary. But it's the bizarreness of this episode doesn't come from that. It came from its uh, it came from Yuga's opponent, the chair the, the king of chairs. <laughs> Who is actually um, <clears throat> Neil's favorite chair. Right? Let me get a water break first. Alright. Yugo was able to beat this, and he almost wasn't able to beat this opponent. Same. You know, it was sort of a lockdown combo. He wasn't able to. If he, he wasn't able to, if he wasn't able to guess uh, which one is the real Kaizo, he might have lost. Yugo almost lost this one, but eventually, uh, he found a way to win. Found a way to win, and well. The main villain, Neil, uh, sort of shows his soft side, right? The King of Chairs is supposed to but Neil doesn't want. He still wants. He still wants a. The King of Chairs is also known as Sebastian. He's, he named it Sebastian. He still wants Sebastian uh, in his daily undertaking, in his life. He's, we probably saw the human side of Neil. Okay? He's now the main villain of this uh, of this series. Hindi na si Roa, alright? Hindi na si Roa. Kasi uh, tagagawa si ano eh. Uh, I think he's one of the six. Si, uh, si Neil. <clears throat> All's ending well and... Well, Kaizo is still the comic relief, okay? Kaizo is the only non-human comic relief of this show. Okay? And we all know the human comic relief is Luke. <laughs> so the, the comic relief is there and the duel, okay? The duels of Yu-Gi-Oh! never cease to amaze me. That's why I am a huge fan of this franchise. They would... The producers would actually have the writers draw up a separate script for the duel scene. And they did not disappoint me. Did not disappoint me. So, with, an, with again, an effective storyline within the episode, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 19, no thumbs up. I'll give you a further explanation of why two thumbs up. Because Sebastian is, I think, one of the weirdest opponents uh, ever in the entire franchise. One of the weirdest. Okay? If you know about a man, 
a massage chair that turns into a robot and has a has its own dual disc. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? So Okay, I won't I won't keep this long. Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s episode 19 again. Two thumbs up. The weirdness and the creepiness, that's what that's what uh, made me give this episode the two thumbs up. Sebastian is one of the weirdest opponents I've ever seen in this franchise. King's Raid episode 2. So, yeah, so. Remember, this is a 26 episode venture. So the story may be, uh, if you're not used to, uh, if you're not used to slower paced animes, this, uh, this may not be for you, right? But judging from, uh, well, second episode, uh, there's, uh, there's a truth to be revealed. There are some truths to be revealed and some backstories. And <clears throat> there is a little bit of a battle scene. A little bit of a little bit of a battle scene, but I think there was just a feeling out battle scene. <laughs> right. Um call this. Castle is the son of King Kyle. I don't know. I don't know how. So we'll just have to find out here in the next episode. Overall, uh, it's a modest episode. It's a modest episode. Uh, and I, I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention uh, there was some politics going on. That was uh, that was tackled in this episode. And. Basically, I am uh, I, I am somewhat not satisfied with how, how uh, with, with the pacing of this episode. Alright? Binitin pa ako eh. Binitin pa ako. But the story uh, storyline uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit slow. Okay? For an episode, not not for the entire series. Okay. For an episode. Um what's that? I am uh, There was not even a humor element. There was no humor element in this episode. So um, Yeah. Let's just rate it. King's Raid episode 2. Let me as to the pacing for a, for a single episode, all right? I, I think I said, I thought, come on. Castle just found out that he's the son of a legendary king. The savior. He was the, he, he's the savior's son. He was the son of the man who saved humanity 100 years ago. But he didn't have to... He just didn't have to, uh, to put the back put the backstory on that on hold. You could you could have start you could have at least started it before 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 cutting before uh, before ending the episode right there. Um, I don't know I, I don't know what the animators I don't know what the producers were thinking. But, uh, yeah, overall, because of that, uh, it just became a decent episode. I think I only uh, laughed once, but I wasn't totally, uh, I wasn't totally convinced with the humor element in this episode, right? There should be a humor element, come on, guys. It's, uh, it's, an, it's an adventure anime. 
I mean, well, the pilot was better. The pilot was better. When it comes to the action sequences, of course, the, story, the pacing of the story. But the, the, for, uh, for an episode, it's, it's really slow. So that's why I gave King's Raid Episode 2. There's always episode three, so let's just let's just find out if we can uh, if we can make up for that. I hope uh, well, this, I hope the backstory behind Castle's past, uh, the way they the way they cut it off in this episode, was worth it. I hope uh, the backstory is intriguing enough for me to um, for me to well. For me to eat my own words here in this review. For me to eat my own words. At least. Right? So again, King's Raid Episode 2. We'll just have to wait for the next episode. Alright, Jujutsu Kaisen Episode 2. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, they're starting to incorporate. They are starting to incorporate what they did for God of High School here. So, uh, involving real humans, real human movement. If you've seen how, how God of High School was made, it's exactly here in this episode. Human, pure human movement for, uh, for the fight scenes, even even for the uh, even for the ED. Right. <clears throat> Another impressive fight scene uh, involved one of the principal's uh, puppets. Nani mo naki itadori? Pinalaban niya and made him itadori. Itadori made him, made it, re, made him, made it realize. It made Itadori realize what, well, what his true purpose is as a jujutsu, as a, uh, as a future jujutsu. And it, he's already into it. He's already, he's already eaten two of, uh, two of those cursed fingers already. Because he's in this episode, pinakain sa kanya, <laughs> which is which is really creepy. Okay, it picks me up. Absolutely. Uh, blew my mind slash freak me out. Okay? To tell, to tell you honestly, guys. To tell you honestly, mga ka lifestyle. So, the flow of the story is really good. It's really good. And, uh, well, that, that fight scene, nothing short of mind blowing. And uh, there, there's a humor element. Um, it's not the um, it's not the cute humor. It's the dark humor that will probably uh, that will that it will probably uh, be branded to Jujutsu Kaisen. Dark humor, and if you don't get it, you're a fucking normie. You're a fucking normie. Um, I've already I've already seen the first two episodes and. Right now, I'm telling you, I am in awe. I am in awe of this, uh, of this supernatural anime. Normally, it doesn't happen. Normally, that doesn't happen to me. But for this, it has happened. So, Jujutsu Kaisen episode two. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Wow. Um, Jujutsu Kaisen reminds me, uh, uh, well, it's a cross between Soul Eater and Zenki. Jujutsu Kaisen is something in between them. Right. Of course, well, if you remember the anime Zenki, after after killing his opponent, Zenki eats the seed because it, because each time Zenki kills an opponent, kills an enemy, it turns into a seed. Nami mata. He eats that. He eats that. So this, 
the Jutsu Kaisen reminded me of Zenki because the lead character eats, eats a cursed finger each time. It's a cursed, it's a cursed finger, which is a part of uh, some, some, call it some OP sorcerer that who can't be beaten. I don't know, I, I don't know how he got beaten, and all his twenty fingers got scattered all over Japan at least. Ever wonder why it's twenty fingers? Because he has four arms, right? He has four arms. That uh, that evil sorcerer. So. Wow. Reminded me of Zenki. Now the Soul Eater part because, well, as you know, Soul Eater uh, has its lead character in a school full of sorcerers. Full of, uh, say, dead sorcerers. Okay? So Jujutsu Kaisen reminded me of that also. But uh, it's a cross between Soul Eater and Zenki. Jujutsu Kaisen is in between them. Jujutsu Kaisen is on uh, it's on a league of its own. Two episodes pa lang. I've only seen two episodes but I can say it's on a league of its own. The hype is real. For the second time, for the second episode, I'm telling you guys, the hype is real. Again, Jujutsu Kaisen episode 2. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Studio Mapa has well, uh, has uh, done it again, all right? What they started with God of High School, they're continuing here, uh, graphics-wise, okay? of how they how they delivered how they delivered the animation in this. So, if you're familiar with uh, with how God of High School was made, you will instantly recognize it here in Jujutsu High School. Okay, Yashahime episode 2. Um, another great backstory. We now check we now check out uh, we now check out uh, Toa's backstory. Her side of the entire storyline. How she how she got to the present, how she grew up, and how she well basically found her warrior self again. Her, uh, probably her destiny, all right. And it came at a bad time. <laughs> they were supposed, they were about to. Uh, the Tree of Ages spilled out her sister and her cousin, <laughs> and with a demon, and with a demon to deal with. So, and the final scene. Just sh final scene, she broke her favorite sword. And because the demon skin is that tough. Okay? So as to break Toa's favorite sword. Um, wow. Well, uh, we see. I see another, uh, uh, another character from the original Inuyasha. Kwaku, mama na sarito. He's a grown man now in episode two. And Hisui, the one, the baby we saw in episode one, is now, uh, now a, uh, well, he's now a bright young boy here, being guided by, by his uncles, Kwaku. So, you know back. <laughs> of course, we saw Kaide. Um. Kikyo's, uh, Kikyo's younger sister na matandaan na ngayon. Wow! Okay. 50% fan service, 50% um, current storyline. Good mix. A good mix. You can't just uh, remove the original characters, the original characters of Inuyasha that quickly. Because the storyline, their storylines are intertwined. It is very obvious that Yashahime is its uh, it's a legitimate spin-off because of the story, because of the intertwining storylines. Right? This episode uh, shows how uh, uh, how 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 tough a girl Toa is. Kano siya kaasting, 
right? She even dresses as a boy. Okay? So we can we can say she's uh, emasculate, but not uh, but not totally lesbian. Okay? She has she still has those female tendencies. She just loves to dress as a boy. Gusto lang niya talaga mag magdamit na lalaki. We call that emasculate. At least we can call that emasculate. She can easily pass off as a boy. <laughs> Alright? Easily pass off as a boy. And fight scenes, vintage Inuyasha. Vintage Inuyasha. So, uh, we, we're now seeing the first time that uh, this will probably be the first time that all three will fight as one. Or all three will fight as a team. We did not actually see them fight as a team in episode 1 kasi na-concentrate sa backstory ng Inuyasha. Uh, what, what, happened, what happened after the final season ended? So, I don't know, I still have goosebumps. Every time I uh, recall that episode, I, I, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I'm quite an Inuyasha fan myself. Right? I'm quite an Inuyasha fan myself. So, hmm. overall, it's a really good episode. It's a really good episode. Kasi, dito, dito makikita kita yung tatong magpipinsan eh. Yung mga anak nila, Inuyasha at it's a Sumaru. They're all, with, they're all, they're all in the same bloodline. And they, they really have to find a way to get, to get, get all three of those girls back. Kasi, like um, they've been assigned since birth to, to one each. Um, it's, the, it's the way I see it. Parang ganun yung nakikita ko. So, the plot this the plot twist will probably start in episode 3. So, you, you better watch out for that. But in the meantime, <clears throat> Yasha Hime episode 2 2 thumbs up. 2 thumbs up. I love her. I love Toa's backstory. Okay? I love Toa's backstory. How she got separated from Setsuna when they were still young. Para siya napadpad sa present. And how... And how Kagome's brother adopted her. Okay? This... I can say that this is a twist already in the story. Because... Um, Kagome's, bro- Kagome's brother actually adopted her. Kapatid ni Kagome. Kapatid ni Kagome yun. Younger brother niya. So, again, another character from the original series. And the Three of Ages is still there. Still wreaking havoc on the sto- <coughs> on, <coughs> on the storyline. The way it did in Inuyasha. Okay? So that's why, that's why, Yasha in episode 2 receives the two thumbs up. 50% fan service, 50% current storyline. Good mix. It's a good mix. It's it's catering to both long-time Inuyasha fans and I'm very sure new ones. Just to get them acquainted with the original storyline and of course to draw the original fan base to the current storyline. Ganda! Ang ganda! So again, Yasahime episode 2. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Okay. Warlords of Secret Dripa episode 2. And I thought, uh, and I truly thought the one hour pilot was. Was, was it but hey don't get me wrong right what I said on the pilot is true for for episode 2 two girls doing badass things right they were badass in this episode especially when they faced that uh, a new pillar which, uh, which, which uh, makes a water barrier they found a way to penetrate his defenses to uh, they actually flew in a tunnel. 
that takes a lot. That takes a lot of. Uh, it takes a re it takes a really good pilot to do that, even in real life. <laughs> it takes a really good pilot to do that. So, in with their vintage planes, they took up they took up the pillar. They are slowly becoming a team now. And of course, Claudia is now being, uh, being, uh, what you call this? It's now sold at the idea that she's going to stay here for a long time. She's starting to become. Uh, she's now feeling comfortable now with the rest of, with the rest of the of the bottle is assigned to this place. So, all in good for us as uh, as, as all the viewers, but. I'm a little disturbed as what to what Odin said in the final scene. Enjoy, enjoy the friendship while you can because they're in in something to that effect. Because there are storms coming. Whoa! What does the All Father? What does the All Father mean by that? Don't underestimate this kid. He is Odin. He is the. Uh, King of the Norse gods, the All Father. I don't know if he, I don't know if he's the actual villain here, but based on what he said, he's teetering on that. He's teetering between uh, hero and villain. So, again, well, a good mix of humor and action. Well, as expected of a lo of a uh, lowly anime, there's a uh, there's a lot of cute things going on, and well, of course, they're not just four cuties; they're also four badasses. And I love the way the uh, the rest of the base treats them. They treat them like an idol group, right? If you're a fan of of like. Uh, lowly animes like K On and Love Live, or even uh, even Bang Dream, you're probably going to love Water Water the Secret Rifa. Although it's not uh, it's not musical in nature. This is this is a flat out action is a flat out action anime. Even though it's uh, even though it's led by lowlies by four lowlies. All right. Never underestimate the action that this anime brings to the table. And they've proven that in this episode again. Now, remind you, we're only two episodes in. Although the pilot is one hour, nope, it's still treated as one episode. So that long episode, parang right. tayo. I love, I love how this episode ran. The story, the plot, uh, the twist in the end really had me, uh, really had me think. So, Warlords of Sigurd Rifa Episode 2. Two thumbs up. A modest two thumbs up. Again, I really love how this, um, how the, uh, how the episode, yeah, how the episode ran. Bottom line, how the episode ran. And wow, all right, wow. I can't believe this. Uh, this base is filled with party animals. <laughs> Yeah, out of place to Claudia Rita. She is so conservative. I mean, she's the most conservative of the four. And like a, she wants me into culture shock right now. <laughs> but she performed really. But she, despite that, she, despite that culture shock, she performed really well. Performed really well. Again, Warlords of Secret Dreamfa episode two. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. So let's wait for the next. Let's wait for the next episode. Ah, I really can't wait to watch the next one, right? Oh my God! I think I forgot to. I forgot to turn on the mic for the re for the reactions. Oh, okay, anyway, so. Overall, it's it's a good episode. Okay, it's a really good episode. Um, maga, uh, we've seen we've seen how tough the G boys are. 
how uh, how deep their connections are right in order to in order to sue the company they hired uh, they hired a group of attorneys yung pala mga member din mga dating member pala na G-Boys ito <laughs> so medyo malawak na rin ang connection nila kasi that that goes to show everybody how uh, how established this gang is ikikibukuro pinakita nila ngayon baga may, may pangil na rin sila ganun ganun ang ahaba mga pangil ng mga to so uh, it's an organization run by uh, mostly king pero tumingin sa natulong sa kaibigan si Makoto who is a former G-boy so, magandang ano magandang magandang mix and for this episode ang ganda na story ha? going up against a huge corporation kasi for labor malpractices na sinusumbong sa kanila ng mga mem ng with their, their respective members G-Boys as if there are G-Boys and Red Angels who are employees of this company so kaya ba susumbungan So they decided to what? Well, uh, they decided to whoop, drop the bomb on this corporation. Ayun. So cases have been filed, and of course, they subdued the gang behind the actual gang behind the uh, well, this the setup job between them. So again, overall, it's a, a really good episode. Then let's rate it. Ikibukuro Westgate Park episode two. Two thumbs up. All right. Two thumbs up. I can't wait for uh, the next episode. It's it's shaping up to be a really good anime. All right. I hope personally, uh, I'm, I'm I am starting to love this anime. Ay ba yung ano niya? Um, anime has has dealt with uh. Has had the, has that has had the rival gangs team before, pero uh, it's nothing like Ikebukuro Westgate Park or IWGP. It's not it's nothing like this. Baga uh, more relatable, mas relate mas relatable siya compared to the other uh, gang team animes. Mas relatable siya even to casual even to casuals and normies. All right. Well, the ED is uh, the ED is a bit cool because eh, the ED is um, a bit relatable to the actual to the actual storyline because we're, we're talking about a gang. So again, Ikibukuro Westgate Park episode two. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Noblesse episode 2 <clears throat> I love how this uh, it's only the second episode but I'm beginning to love how this anime shows the human side of its lead characters okay. because wow okay. new characters step in uh, these are fellow nobles of Rice Elf of course Ryzen is the noblesse, the king of the vampires. And <clears throat> these two don't know it yet. These two don't know it yet. But uh, they've been looking down on humans until they they saw Tashiro in action. He actually uh, protected Ryzen from these uh, from these thugs, okay, these bullies. Okay, these aren't just bullies, but they, are, they were toting guns and knives. Nung bumulod na ng balin yung isa, yun, nakialam na si M21. Doon na nakialam. But, and he knew, but he knew all, all that time that Tashiro is able to defend himself against this, against these many thugs. Because, well, he knows how to, he knows how to, he knows how to gauge his allies' abilities. So, I guess that's his, uh, that's his contribution to the group. Yeah, it's a really, really good episode. And uh, uh, Frankenstein has shown his uh, his home body side. Also the cooking, also the washing dishes. Of course, uh, the 
and most of all, he is Rizal's right hand man. Anang kamay siya. Overall, it's a uh, wow for an anime that knows how to tease uh, a character's particular powers. The delivery is really good, and uh, remember, Rizal hasn't shown his true powers yet. So everybody's everybody's uh, is glued to their seats for that. He is yet to show his true power. Tandaan nyo, Ryzen is the noblesse here. A supreme noble. Supreme noble. Uh, supreme noble. Okay, let's quote on quote. But again, overall, it's a really good episode. It's a really good episode. Um, I like the final scene. <laughs> you know, um, Rizal's soft, Rizal's soft side has always been shown since uh, uh, since the pilot, and we're only and we're only in the second episode. But he has this addiction for ramen. <laughs> Even when he is already at home, he will still he will still have Frankenstein cook ramen for him. <laughs> this is the king of the vampires. Don't no bless himself. He still wants this. He's, um, he's developed this addiction to ramen. All right, he would order nothing but ramen. Okay, in the times that we saw him in the cafeteria and of course in his own home, he would still, he still wants ramen. <laughs> I think this is the um, uh, this is the best part of its of. Uh, of this anime's humor element, okay? The lead character who is... Wow, okay? Knows how to hide his powers, okay? He has yet to... We, we've yet to see what Rizel can do to... to an enemy. Okay? He still wants ramen. Natawa ako talaga doon! Nag-aaway lang kayo mga... yung mga housemates niya kung anong kakainin. Then he said, puts down, puts down his teacup and says, Ramen. <laughs> wala na, wala na magawa. <laughs> He's the man of the house. So, if the man of the house wants ramen, you must eat ramen too. <laughs> no, no contest there, okay? That ended the conversation. That ended the discussion right there. The ultimate not said. What Rizal, what Rizal said there. I love it. I love it. How he, uh, how he sub, subtly imposes his will over, uh, over his allies. Uh, of course, he, he is the man of the house anyway. <laughs> He's gonna eat what he wants. He's gonna eat what he wants. And if you're, if you're his guest, you got, you, you show respect by eating the same food he eats. So. I love how this episode ran. Okay. I love how this episode ran. Um, yeah, uh, M twenty one showing the new the new character, Regis, si Regis, that humans are humans don't need much of their help anymore these days because uh, uh, during their time, during Rizal's time, they relied heavily on them, but. M21 showed them that humans can pretty much defend themselves. They become savage. When uh, Regis saw how Tashiro fights, he practic Tashiro practically defended uh, the entire group against this against this bunch of thugs who were toting knives and guns. That's uh, I, somehow. Regis was impressed. I love how the... Uh, let's see the light moment of... The light moments of this anime. If this how this anime will feature its light moments... Hey, consider me all in. I'm gonna... I am so going to appreciate each and every episode. Right? So what if there aren't any... Uh, so what if there aren't 
any much violence here. All right? The violence is yet to come. All right? I feel this is a good setup episode for for uh, for uh, any big uh, any big battles that will that will happen in later episodes. At least you've seen uh, at least uh, the group here. Wiesel's group is now actually sizing. They, they're actually sizing each other up. Chaka gusto ko yung angasan dito nila. Regis sa kanya M21. I'll kill you. No, I'll kill you tonight. <laughs> Ganun ang angasan nila. Death threats. The death threats kind of angasan. That's why I love, I love this episode. Right? So, Noblesse episode 2. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Right? Noblesse has, uh, it has its way of setting up future plots it has an uncanny way of uh, delivering the humor bringing uh, bringing the goods when it comes to the, to the light moments yeah expect great things for this anime and we're only and we're only two episodes in I'm saying that now expect uh, no not great things legendary things now let's make a bold prediction right now I'm gonna make a bold prediction for this anime it is going to be a classic if you want to remember 2020 remember noblesse remember noblesse so noblesse episode 2 thumbs up Down to business. Higurashi 2020 episode 2. <clears throat> and I thought it wouldn't it wouldn't get any disturbing than the first one. Okay. <clears throat> there weren't any uh, there weren't any clues as to who killed that worker yet. The um the entire village was gearing up for its uh, for its native festival. Of course, our uh, our five protags, the the one boy and four girls, are there. They're also they're also gearing up for the festival. Kasi. Uh, you know how Japanese culture is. Kasi, yeah, even even here in the Philippines, when we have our uh, when we have our festivals, everybody is uh, it's serious business sometimes when it comes to festivals. Especially uh, in your festivals in Nohali. Now, <clears throat> did you see the way Keiichi uh, swung that butcher knife just to just to cut that just to cut the wood loose off of that uh, that KFC of that Colonel Sanders statue? The <laughs> flashback, behind, All right? He had a flashback that he was actually killing someone. And if you can recall episode one, that was the first scene. All right, the way he um, the way he was, he was hacking away at that wood. That creeped me out. That fucking creeped me out. Okay, right? that fucking creeped me out. Uh, I don't know if you if you caught my expression on. Uh, camera because um, I was I was watching it. I was watching it right now so I couldn't see I couldn't see myself on, on the on the stream right now <clears throat> but and uh, Ren is at it again you every time uh, Mejo every time that uh, that Keiichi is always insisting on the same questions she ends it right there emphatically Parang. <laughs> As if she wants to kill Keiichi right there on the spot, parang uh, that's her tonality. That's her. That's her. That's her tonality. My God. And the game they played, uh, 
zombie tag. Okay, that freaked me out as well. Do you do you like to play zombie tag? Hey, got the tank. Do you want to play zombie tag yourself, right? Everyone who is trying to tag you is that creepy. <laughs> All right, but there's there is some comic relief. There is some comic relief. Like, I don't know what the I don't know what uh, the four girls' brand of humor is, but okay, it's borderline creepy right now. I find it as borderline creepy. I right? I find it borderline creepy. And okay, well, overall, okay, this episode creeped me out. Okay, I don't know how. I don't know if you. Yeah, I don't know if you caught my expression on stream because uh, I was watching it. And the the player screen is on, so I couldn't see myself. I couldn't see myself. I couldn't see my own expression. But the, uh, this episode creeped me out. But not the way, not the way episode one did. Pero nonetheless, nonetheless, it creeped me out. These four girls are starting to creep the shit out of me. Tell you honestly, especially, yeah, Rena, one the hat, the one who, the one who always wants cute things around her, right? Yeah, the lowly, the local lowly. If you want, if you want it, if you want to describe her that way, she's beginning to creep me out, all right? And seeing the, uh, see the, you seen the end credit screen? See the end credits? Whoa! All right. I did not expect that. That kind of an end credit, those uh, those end credit uh, artworks. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> you would not expect that from uh, probably from any horror from, from probably from any horror anime in recent years. Okay. I did. I personally did not expect that. Especially when the time uh, Keiji was holding that same butcher knife. Holding that same butcher knife, he was hacking away at someone. Blood. Blood spurting all over. <laughs> First time I've seen that in an ED. In all my years as an anime fan. First time I've seen that in an ED, in an end credit scene. In an end credit. <clears throat> but um, the ED, uh, they've already introduced the OP and the ED here. The ED was, wow, was uh, was was absolutely uh, cringy. Maga sa pilip, maga sa pinoy swak, swak sa end screen, swak swak sa at least. Uh, it's it, it's right on the money. At least with this episode, the OP. Oh yeah. yeah, maybe I should consider that on my playlist. All right, it's not, uh, it's not exactly cringy, but it captures, the, it captures the somewhat gloomy feel. There is a gloomy feel with this reboot, eh? uh, that has uh, they that they picked up from the, uh, I said, probably from the original. Because hey, tell you honestly, I haven't seen the original, not a single episode. But this reboot is giving me a chance. Of getting a good idea of how of how cringy okay, of how cringy the original was and it's giving me and it's giving it to me really good ah two episodes pala alright and on, it's only uh it's only two episodes it's only been two episodes but it's giving me those ideas right now alright <laughs> uh, I'm serious to considering the OP of this reboot on my playlist. I'm right? seriously considering it. So, Higurashi 2020 episode 2. Two thumbs up. A cringy two thumbs up. Right. <clears throat> no, oh, there was no gore in this episode. Not unlike, not unlike episode 1, it started like that. But, it was totally the, the episode was totally suggestive in nature when it comes to cringiness. 
and creepiness, right? Imagine the game of tag with a creepy twist and the look on those girls' faces. <laughs> Even an adult like an adult like me has been creeped out with that. All right, a 47 year old like me has been creeped out with those with those with those with those looks on those four girls' faces during the, that zombie tag thing. And it's sundown. <laughs> I am so glad I was able to review this episode before this or this happened. I do not want to review this. I do not want to get caught reviewing this episode at night time, right? Especially during this, a 24 hour stream. Bakit ako makatulog? Bakit ako makatulog? Right? Again, because of the the creepy suggestiveness of the episode Higurashi 2020 episode 2 Who thumbs up? Damn! No Couldn't wait to, uh, to see to see episode 3 See the next episode First two episodes, yeah it's already creepy in the first two episodes. And I am... And I'm somewhat guaranteed that the third will do no less. Alright? So let's wait and see. Uh, the Higurashi reboot, well, so far, it's... Okay, I, I don't know about you. I don't know why... Um, why other anime fans are, uh, are deliberately missing this out because... Why? Why? Because it will creep. Because it will creep you out. You got no balls. <laughs> you got no balls. Right? Oh, I just can't wait for the. I just can't wait for the next episode. Because uh, he's been getting the two thumbs up from me. He's, uh, for for faster web series. Akudama Drive Episode 1 Fucking shit Okay One of the wildest Pilots I have I've seen this year One of the wildest pilots I've never seen so much Blood spilled In a pilot episode In in a pilot episode, uh, probably since probably since last week with uh, Higurashi, all right? This, is, this isn't a horror anime; it's a crime anime, all right? From Studio Pero, the guys, same guys that brought us uh, Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs, Naruto, and Bleach. What can I say about the pilot? Fucking crazy. Fucking insane. Right? Imagine having uh, six criminals and one ordinary girl in one group. Alright? Banded together by a uh, by a cat. <laughs> okay? It's insane. It's an insane pilot. Right? First half of the episode, everybody, everyone wants to kill each other. Then, all of a sudden, they find themselves, find themselves having a common enemy. Okay? The police. <laughs> okay? they, re they inadvertently rescue one of their own. It's, they're called Akodamas. Okay? Hearted criminals. With assumed life set. With assumed... Uh, Assume jail sentences. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't judge an anime on graphics, on, on, on graphics, right? But the graphics here are stunning. Okay. Studio Pero did a tremendous job. It's a splendid job. 
for a pilot. And storyline, I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna like this, how this storyline will unfold. And, uh, wow. The fight scenes, okay? Over the top. Simply over, over the top is an understatement, all right? There's one, uh, there's one guy named Cutthroat. He wants to cut. He loves cutting people's heads off. All right. Okay. If you're not, if you're not in the gore, then this anime is not for you. Okay. You, you might not handle the gore of this one. So overall, it's a, it's a fantastic pilot. All right. Violence, humor. Sexual suggestiveness, like you might want to say that. It's all, it's all here. It's all in this pilot. So, Akodama Drive Episode One, two thumbs up, all right. But personally, me, I wouldn't want to recommend this anime to, uh, to fans below fans below eighteen. Nope, I am not recommending this to you because. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a responsible adult, okay? I wouldn't recommend uh, animes as violent as this to, to fans under 18. Nope, you won't, you won't get, you won't make, you won't make me, right? But for adults like me, this is a fucking good pilot, okay? It's, it's setting the stage already for a fucking good anime. Shit! It's 12.54 a.m. right now, and I am getting my adrenaline going right now because of the pile of this anime. So once again, Akodama Drive Episode 1, a resounding two thumbs up, right? I'm going to expect great things from this anime from now on. So I can't wait for, I can't wait for Episode 2. I just can't wait for the second episode to come. Moriarty the Patriot, episode one. Uh, I kind of expected uh, Moriarty to be this uh, devious, this evil, right? Because well, I'm quite a Sherlock Holmes fan myself. I just expect on him now. He's going to go to this, uh, this this Eden guy to, uh, to kill this to kill this corrupt Earl who's been harassing uh, him. Uh, Moriarty presented himself as a prime consultant, and of course, well, in the end, Eden kills the Earl, kills this Earl himself. Moriarty, Moriarty's hands are clean. Like he said in the final scene, it's the perfect crime. That is creepy, okay? Now you know what to expect of William James Moriarty, Sherlock Holmes' arch en future arch enemy. So, wow, it takes me back to reading those uh, those Sherlock Holmes books in, in the library when I was in elementary. Damn. This is William James Moriarty's M.O. He doesn't want to get his hands dirty. He will always have someone else do his crimes for him. Right. And well, overall it's a, it's a really good final. Sign of things to come. How, uh, how evil, how he became evil personified in, in the world of Sherlock Holmes, the world of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Right. I'm going to enjoy this uh, this anime storyline. Viewing instead of viewing Moriarty as 
as the villain, he's the absolute hero here. Hero of the masses. Let's see how this turns out. So in the meantime, Moriarty the Patriot, episode one. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. I'm going to enjoy uh, reviewing this and this uh, this whole anime by the episode. I'm going to. I'm probably going to enjoy. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm probably going to enjoy rating or reviewing this anime episode by episode because I know someone's going to die <laughs> because I truly believe that every episode someone is going to die by Moriarty's hands no more he doesn't want to get his hands dirty, right? by Moriarty's twisted uh, twisted brain again Moriarty the Patriot episode 1 Thumbs up. Sign, sign of, probably a sign of great things to come for this. Episode. Another uh, great week of anime has passed, and wow, okay. This is probably the biggest undertaking I've ever, I've, uh, I've ever had ever since I started the. Ever since I started these episode reviews uh, all those months ago can't imagine I'm I, I just reviewed 11 animes in this digest for this digest so, it's quite an accomplishment for me and um, even the point even to the point of uh, almost dozing off during uh, the more the Moriarty review <laughs> All right, but I managed to um, manage to uh, see nearly the entire episode, nearly the entire pilot. So don't worry, guys. My review is fair enough, All right? So what's next? In case you haven't noticed, King's Avatar season two is not on this digest. Well, they took a break. They took a, I think they took a one week break because well, during their during its first uh, first week of airing, it's back to back episodes. Then it's episode three, so they figured let's take a break for this week. So King's Avatar season two will be back in the next digest. So by the time it returns, we're going to have twelve animes on that digest. So. I'm already uh, I'm already figuring out a plan on how to <laughs> on how to review all 12 within that within the within the same 24 hour stream. Yes, guys. On Twitch, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to pull it off again. The last one was just 23 hours and 40 minutes, so 20 minutes shy of 24. So that means I can pull it off again. So. You better be looking forward, Maka Lifestyle, in the next for the next digest because the full roster will be coming at ya. Right? All twelve animes being reviewed in during this uh this fall anime season. Alright, so I'm preparing myself for uh, for that. I'm not sure if I can um if I can stream on a Friday again. But we'll see. Okay, we'll see. We might do it. Um, we probably might do it uh, a little earlier, right? Because uh, I'm hell bent on doing another 24-hour stream. I'm I'm willing to go at it again. But I have to do it uh, more, more sensibly, more sensibly. I haven't thanked you. Thank you for um, sticking up with me on that uh, nearly 24 hour stream and here in this digest um, it's more than it's um, it's past one hour but hey uh, I wasn't really sure if I can um, if I can cut 
uh, cut some moments on each separate review because uh, I think uh, I had my I think I had my brain straight for for during those 24 hours I had my uh, I was uh, I was so focused on doing the episode reviews so no not much not much cutting not much uh, not much editing out so but if you enjoyed uh, this hour's worth of reviews thank you and you got taste okay you got taste so again thank you for watching this video up to this point and thank you for being there for the episode reviews I'll see you in the next digest and I'll see you on Twitch in the next stream.